Right now, I'm going to show you how to remove the background from a photograph inside of Photoshop. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com and today I'm going to show you how to remove the background from a photo in Photoshop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down to very simple steps, but we're also going to hone in on the key areas that make a difference between having a not so good selection versus a really good selection. So let's get started. We've got this image that I grabbed from Adobe Stock. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our quick selection brush. I'm gonna start with my hardness up at around about 80. Now notice I have size set to pan pressure. So here's the thing, when we work with this tool, if we have a large brush, it's gonna make a large selection, see that? If we have a small brush, it's going to make a small selection. So what you want to do is use pen pressure. If you have a Wacom pen, that way by varying your pressure, you can go large or small. If you're not using a Wacom tablet, use the right bracket key to make it bigger and then click and select the larger areas. See what I'm doing? Just dragging across those larger areas there. Then what you want to do is hit the left bracket key, make it a little bit smaller, and now you can go in and grab these smaller areas. Now go over the edges on purpose for now. Don't worry about those gaps or those holes. We'll come back to those. All right, so the first level of selection is you want to just get the basic silhouette like we've done here. Don't worry about the holes in between. We'll come back for these. And also don't worry about these fine areas of detail. One area you're going to see you're going to miss a lot when you look at it carefully is areas like this, these corners. And there's going to be little nooks and crannies, such as in between the feet. Now when you go over like I just did there, hit the Alt or the Option key and just paint over there to bring those areas back. Now we're going to take it to a level that a lot of people don't bother with. And that's hitting the magnifying glass twice to go to 100%. And we're going to go around the edges, viewing at 100% with a much smaller brush. So grab our selection brush. And if we make this brush small, we're going to get a way more accurate selection. Most people don't bother with this. They just rush into select a mask. So let's take our time here and get a better selection. Now there's areas I want to get rid of. If I hold the Alt or the Option key, I can now go into these areas. Use a tiny brush to get in here and fix these little holes. The nooks and crannies. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to continue doing this, but I'm going to speed it up a little bit so you don't get bored watching me going through here, making these selections. But this is the extra bit of detail that's going to make a huge difference. All right, control zero goes back. And why don't we go ahead now and refine the selection now that we've made the selection. So we're gonna choose select and mask. And if you look at this, because we took the time to get a really good selection close up, most of our work here is already done. So now we're gonna go and grab our little feather selection tool here. And we're just gonna go over the edge of the hair And these areas here, believe it or not, we can go very gently in here. And this is going to give us, a, give us a semi transparent selection in these little holes here. Just go very gentle, though. 
There we go. All right, so we want to tighten up these edges a little bit. Turn on Show Edge. Notice these areas where we softened it. You can see there's a bigger edge, but the radius we want to move it up to just, let's start with just one and see if we see an edge. We do. That's great. Turn off Show Edge and see how that refines that edge and just smoothens it out a little bit. Now, there are some tools that you can use to go in here and make it even better. We're going to double click here on the magnifying glass to go all the way into 100%. Okay, so this is not one of those tutorials where I'm just going to make it look really good from a distance. So maybe you've found Select a Mask hasn't worked for you because a lot of the tutorials you've seen are just been one click magic trick. In this case, I'm going to show you how to get in and do the fine detail work so it will work for you. This tool here is used for soft edges. The tool underneath it is used for hard edges. So if I hit the left bracket key and I draw, you can see it creates a hard edge. Let me just undo that and go up under this tool here, select the tool and we can choose the hardness. Right now it's set to 100. Take it down to about 70. And now we can see the edge there is looking a little bit soft, a little more realistic. So let me undo it. So we want to do this edge here. So what we're going to do is bring the opacity down a little bit so we can see the image underneath. Tap, hold shift, Click, see it does that straight line. And if it goes over the edge like it did, hit the Alt or the Option key and actually take it away from the edge. See what I'm doing here? And let's do the same here. So just so I can demonstrate how this works, I'm taking that edge away. Okay, turn the opacity down. See that edge there? Make sure our tool is selected. Just add a little bit, click, release, hold down Shift, and right on the edge, click and see how it creates that straight line. Let's do it again here. Hold down shift, click straight line here, shift straight line. So get those edges nice and tight. So if I turn the opacity down now, you can see I was able to create those edges. So essentially, if you want to get perfect edges, this is how you're going to do it. Let me do it once again over here. We're going to hit the alter option key, pull that down a little bit. Just kind of take it away. I'm going to click, hold down shift, click again towards that straight line. We missed it. Let's do it again. Okay, so we know. Let's bring our opacity down so we can see. Hold right on the edge. Hold down shift right on that edge. Click. Do the same thing here. If we look at the opacity now, nice straight edge. Start here, hold down shift, click, fills that in. So that's essentially what you're going to do for the straight lines. Now to get in here, make the brush smaller with the left bracket key, hit the Alt or the Option key, and you're just literally going to go in here and you're just going to refine these. Now for things like this, what can we clean these up? Yeah, we can. If we hit the contrast a little bit, notice how that will sometimes clean up these edges a little bit. And if you need to push it, you can sometimes just give it a, just a breathe on the feather and that gives it something for that contrast to work with. Now, when you're working with the contrast, one of the things you need to be aware of is this gap in here. So if I turn that contrast down and then we turn it up, see how it actually really starts to work in there. You just, but you just got to keep an eye on it. Now at this level, the hair is not looking great. Let's grab our hairbrush, make it smaller. And we're just working in just a little bit closer. And so you can see there, one of the keys to making this work is to just work a little bit closer, a little bit tighter. Let me double click the hand tool to zoom out. Now I showed you how to do some of those edges. If you want to get the rest of those edges perfect, you can do it that way. If we output this to a new layer with a layer mask, click OK. Now we've got our cutout. But because we have a mask, if I hit the shift key, we can show that edge. And of course, shift click again to take it away. All right, let's just open this because this is going to contrast very heavily with it. This is not a background we'd use, but it's good for checking to see how this looks. Dragging it into the new document and release it. And let's have a look what we can see. So if you look at it, now we can check our edges and see how through there we can see that semi-transparency 
by using that brush there. So that kind of picks up that transparency. Okay, so we've just dropped this in here so we can examine the image. I have other tutorials that show you how to match the colors and the tones to match this so it actually looks like it's part of this image, which it doesn't at the moment, it's not supposed to. But there's one thing a lot of YouTube trainers don't tell you, there's a big difference between online social media quality work and high resolution print quality work. Now I've done a lot of high resolution print work throughout my career. What we've got here is more than good enough for social media, more than good enough for web. Now, if you're using this for high resolution print, what you need to do is go into that one-to-one -one pixel and get in there, you know, like I was showing you with those edges, with the um, masking with the brush, and get in there at a 100% view and just get all those areas really nice and perfect up close, which is overkill for web or online use. People that really want to get more in depth into this, I just finished a course called Selection Secrets in Photoshop. It's three and a half hours, 18 lessons that goes super in depth and shows you how to make every kind of selection inside of Photoshop. And this does everything from hard edges to hair to using the different tools together in combination, complex backgrounds, easy backgrounds, quick tips and tricks, as well as in-depth procedures to get perfect print quality work. Anyway, so check out that course in the descriptions underneath. So anyway, guys, I'm curious, did you guys learn anything from this? Did you find it useful? If so, let me know in the comments underneath what you found useful. If there's other tutorials you'd like to see from me, please also drop a comment. So all right, guys, thanks for watching this. If you like these kind of tutorials, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. You'll get a new tutorial from me every single week. Ring the notification bell so you know when I upload it, which is usually every Tuesday. If you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.